Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be answering three questions and they are number one, can you put an APS-C lens on a full frame camera? Number two, can you put a full frame lens on an APS-C camera? And number three, what about aperture values on a APS-C lens? Is it the exact same if it says F 1.4 on an APS-C lens? and a full frame lens that says f 1.4 are they the exact same things do they let in the same amount of light and do you get the same background blur so we'll be answering all of this all right so why am i making this video and how is it different than the hundreds of others on this topic or these topics on youtube well number one my goal is to make this simple and concise like so that a kid could understand and also my goal is to answer all three of these questions in one video so that you just have like a broad scope of knowledge on this topic. Question number one, can you put an APS-C lens on a full frame camera? Well, in short, you can. And for photography, you probably shouldn't. And for video, it's probably okay. First, let's talk about photography. So the camera we're shooting on right now that we're filming on is a Sony a7 IV. It has a 33 megapixel sensor for photography. And if I were to take this APS-C lens and put it on the camera, it would force it into a 1.5 times crop. And by doing this, you could still use the lens, you could still take pictures, but you're gonna reduce the amount of megapixels that the readout of the sensor is. So whereas before it was a 33 megapixel sensor, now by taking pictures with this lens, an APS-C lens, you will then get a 15 megapixel sensor. And all cameras kind of vary based on the starting point of the megapixel count of that full frame camera. So for photography, probably not the best idea, especially if you wanna print your images after or have flexibility to crop in in post. While I have you here, if you're finding value in this video, it goes a really long way. If you could just leave a like, helps my channel get noticed. Thank you so much and let's continue with this video. All right, what about for video? On a full frame camera, can you take an APS-C lens and can you put it on? Yes, of course. Is it a good idea? Sure, in a lot of cases, it actually has some benefits as well. So benefit number one, it's widely regarded online that cameras are um, better in rolling shutter performance when they're in the APS-C crop mode. So my Sony a7 IV has a sensor readout. And when it's in the full frame, and I'm using full frame lenses, I'll do a test here, so I'll put it over the screen, but you go back and forth and you see like a jello effect when you pan left to right. Now, if you put the camera in APS-C crop mode, apparently the readout is easier for the sensor and you get less of a rolling shutter problem. So like less of that jello effect when you pan left to right. So if you take APS-C lenses, put them on a full frame camera, then it's forced into a 1.5 times crop mode. You don't have to worry about rolling shutter performance as much. Next, let's talk about video and the resolution when you use APS-C lenses. So remember how we talked about in photography, you lose effective megapixels when you use an APS-C lens on a full frame camera. But for video, you're actually not losing a whole lot of quality and it still looks pretty much 4K to most people's eyes. And on my camera, it's an A7 IV, and it has an oversampled readout. So it's actually more than 4K. I believe it's a 7K readout. So with that, if you take your APS-C lens and it has a 1.5 times crop, it's actually still shooting 4K when you use that lens. And another pro is that it's lighter. And another pro is that it's a lot more inexpensive. So this lens here, kind of a beast. I love it. It's a 24 to 70. It's a full frame lens and it's really big. This here, APS-C lens and side by side, you can obviously tell that APS-C lens is like a whole lot smaller in weight. So easier to travel with, but this lens I picked up for like 150 bucks used. You cannot find uh, zooms for full frame cameras that are any kind of quality uh, for 150 bucks used. Like this is like a thirteen, fourteen hundred dollar Canadian lens. So to summarize for photography, probably a bad idea to use APS-C lenses on a full frame camera for video. Sometimes it's even a good idea. Question number two, can you use a full frame lens on an APS-C little baby guy like this? Yep. The answer is yes. You can just mount it on and it would look funny because look at the ratio that lens to actual camera size. It's kind of hilarious. But by doing this, 
is there any benefits? The only benefit you're really gonna get in using a full frame lens on your APS-C camera is you're gonna get more reach because when I put this on an APS-C camera, so like a crop sensor, I'm gonna get more reach out of it. It's no longer a 24 to 70. It now has a 1.5 times crop attached to it. And one more pro that you might wanna know is that on bad lenses, the corner sharpness is usually not the best but that's eliminated when you take a full frame lens. So let's say this is a bad lens with bad corner sharpness and I put it on this camera here. Well, by attaching it now, it's just reading through the glass and it's actually negating that corner sharpness. So um, usually the sharpness gets better as you come to the center of the image. And that is a pro of using a full frame lens on an APS-C camera. Now, are those two pros worth you carrying around big, heavy, full frame lenses and attaching them to your APS-C camera? No, I know for me it's definitely not. And also, they're more expensive. So why would you do this? The only time you would ever do this is if you had like a B cam, you know, you're a full frame shooter and you already have some lenses and then you have an APS-C body and these are really nice lenses. So why not just like carry two full frame lenses? You might need them for your full frame camera but you can attach one to your APS-C body and then now you just have more versatility and you actually have two cameras to work with. All right, and the last question I wanna to answer today is does the aperture value of a lens change based on if it's APS-C or if it's full frame? Take a lens that's APS-C for example and it's an f1.4, that's the lowest aperture. And then take a full frame and it's also 1.4. Why is it that you sometimes get more background blur out of the full frame lens? We're gonna talk about that. But for all intensive purposes, the f1.4 on this, f1.4 on this are exactly the same, and you're gonna get the exact same results as well in terms of low light performance. So if I take a picture with both of these on a full frame camera, you're gonna get the exact same exposure if the settings are exactly the same. So light transmission is identical. You also get the same depth of field. So if I take a picture with this, with the exact same settings as I take a picture as this, you're gonna get the same amount and same look and same background blur. And this is where people are like, Maddie, that is not true. Because when I take pictures on my APS-C lens, it doesn't look like a 1.4 aperture. And that's where our field of view comes into play. So I took pictures with both of these lenses using the exact same settings from the same spot in the room. And I'll show you guys that by putting them in the exact same spot in the room, you get the exact same background blur, exact same look and exposure of the image. However, when I took the pictures on an APS-C lens and an APS-C camera, it was obviously 1.5 times punched in. So I got a different looking image. However, the background blur was the same, the exposure was the same, but the field of view was not the same. So what I had to do was back up the APS-C camera and lens and then match it to the field of view of the full frame. And by doing this, I am effectively changing the background blur or bokeh of the image. So the three things that affect the background blur of your image is number one, the aperture value of the lens itself, then the focal length of that lens, and the third thing is the distance the lens and camera are away from the actual subject. So to summarize, you get a better bokeh or background blur from a full frame sensor because there's no crop factor and you can actually be closer to the subject. But hypothetically, if you didn't care at all about the field of view of the image and you shot the exact same settings on an APS-C camera and lens and the exact same on a full frame camera and lens, you're gonna get the same exposure. You're also gonna get the same amount of background blur, like that same look. Again, if you didn't care about the field of view of the actual image, because that is what's different in these two. Okay, what a doozy of a video. So that was three questions that are not so easy to comprehend at times, and I hope I simplified them and made them a little bit easier for you to understand for yourself or to explain to friends like you know what you're talking about when it comes to cameras. But that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Maddie out. Peace.